the Iron Lady. This was the nickname of Margaret Thatcher, the first female prime minister of the UK, who held office from the late 1970s to the early 1990s. Her reforms and leadership during a turbulent economic crisis left a lasting legacy. Welcome to Economic Rhapsody, the channel that discovers history to understand the future. And today, I'm happy to host Roni, my beloved wife who decided that it's about time to dedicate a full episode to a female character that left a big impact on our economy. Thank you, Dan. I'm excited to join you today. Margaret Thatcher was a pioneer in many ways. She became the first female prime minister of the United Kingdom and ruled for more than a decade. Her leadership style and economic policies left a permanent mark on her country. Yep, I agree, her influence stretched far beyond her time in office. Thatcher's firm leadership style, determination, and unwavering commitment to her principles set her apart as a revolutionary figure. Her impact on the UK's economy was profound and has had lasting effects. Her economic policies not only shaped the nation but also had far-reaching implications globally, inspiring leaders around the world to adopt similar strategies. Now before we explore Thatcher's economic reforms in detail, it's crucial to understand the economic crisis that plagued the UK during the 70s. This crisis set the stage for Thatcher's ascent to power and highlighted the pressing need for change. So in the 70s, the UK faced severe stagflation, a stagnant growth with high inflation rates. Thatcher obviously had many challenges to cope with. We'll get into this shortly. But let's start from the end, how did Thatcher address these challenges, and what were the outcomes of her economic reforms? Well, in a nutshell, Thatcher implemented bold reforms to restore competitiveness and stimulate growth, revitalizing industries and transforming London into a global financial hub. Due to the move toward deregulated free markets, did her policies have winners and losers? Great question. Some industries indeed extra thrived, but others faced closures and job losses as the economy underwent significant changes that caused conflicts in the labor market. A famous example was the miners' strike, which highlighted tensions between economic reform and workers' concerns. Anyway, I think it's about time to stop the small talk and get deeper into the story of the Iron Lady. So hold on and let's get started. Thatcher's political journey was nothing short of remarkable. Born in 1925, in a medium-sized city named Grantham, daughter of a dominant father, Alfred Roberts, who significantly influenced her personality. Alfred was a businessman who owned grocery shops and was well involved in the local politics of the city and even served as its mayor for a short period. Following her father, she found political life fascinating and began her political career after graduating Bachelor of Science degree in Chemistry from Oxford University. In the 50s when she joined the Conservative Party, getting elected to the Parliament as a Conservative was pretty impossible in her hometown, considering the fact that the Labour traditionally had a solid majority in Grantham's district. So she took her family 170 kilometers southern to Finchley, North London, where voters were mostly recognized by the Conservative Party. And indeed in 1959 she finally got elected there and was sent to start her historic journey in the British Parliament. With her quick wit and sharp intellect, Thatcher wasted no time making a name for herself within the Conservative Party. It was said that her speeches could cut through the thickest fog of political discourse with surgical precision. All levels of income are better off than they were in 1979. But what the Honourable Member is saying is that he would rather the poor were poorer, provided the rich were less rich. That way you will never create the wealth for better social services as we have. And what a policy. Yes, he would rather have the poor poorer, provided the rich were less rich. In 1970, she was appointed as Secretary of State for Education and Science in Edward Heath's government, marking her entry into the realm of governmental leadership. Thatcher's ascent within the Conservative Party was like a game of political Tetris. Each move she made strategically positioned her closer to the top. It was as if she had a master plan, carefully plotting her path to leadership while her opponents struggled to keep up. And indeed, in 1975, Thatcher's master plan paid off as she nailed the leadership position of the Conservative Party. Seeing a woman in that position was a shocking twist in British politics. Yet, it was nothing compared to her winning in the 1979 national elections, which made her the first female to take control of any Western country in the world's history. Well, it's true that she was the first female prime minister of the UK, 
but she wasn't the first female to take power in a Western country. Actually, she was second following Prime Minister Golda Meir, who led Israel from 1969 to 1974. And by the way, we will get more familiar with Golda as soon as I upload my episode about the second oil crisis, which is also related to the UK crisis that put Thatcher in office. But leave it for now. Anyway, make sure to subscribe so you could both support the channel and get notified once this video is on air. Back to our story. So Prime Minister Thatcher faced a country in economic turmoil, like a neglected house desperately in need of renovation. The economic crisis of the 1970s was the greatest in the last 40 years and left the nation's economy in chaos. The public sentiment during that time can be likened to a roller coaster ride, with emotions fluctuating between hope and despair. People were clamoring for change, eager to see a leader who could breathe new life into the economy and restore the nation's confidence. It was as if the entire country was holding its breath, waiting for someone to pull the economic emergency brake. And who better to pull that brake than the Iron Lady herself? Thatcher's strict commitment to free market principles was like a burst of fresh air in a stuffy room filled with bureaucratic red tape. She believed that if the invisible hand of the market could work its magic, it would wave its wand and transform the UK's economy as if performing an economic version of Hogwarts magic. Yes, the Iron Lady herself. Thatcher's steely determination and own beliefs conviction were the things that earned her that nickname. Thatcher's economic policies aimed to ignite that fireworks display and put the UK back on the global economic map. She envisioned a Britain that would shine as bright as a star in the night sky, outshining its competitors and attracting investment like a moth to a flame. Thatcher's ability to inject humor into her political discourse was like a well-timed punchline in a stand-up comedy routine. It not only showcased her wit, but also added a touch of relatability to her leadership style. She had a way of connecting with the public, using humor to diffuse tension and engage in a genuine dialogue. To those waiting with bated breath for that favorite media catchphrase, the U-turn, I have only one thing to say. You turn if you want to. <laughs> the ladies not for turning. Okay, she is wit. And let's not forget Thatcher's iconic funny handbag, which became almost as famous as she was. Like Mary Poppins's umbrella, Thatcher's handbag seemed to hold the secret to her power, an endless supply of clever comebacks and witty retorts. I think I'm gonna buy myself a similar bag soon. <laughs> we continue with the economic crisis of the 1970s, a rough period that shook the foundations of the British economy and tested the strength of its people. Let's take a deep dive into the key factors that led to this crisis and explore the profound impact it had on both the economy and society as a whole. Absolutely, Dan. It was a time of great challenges and uncertainties. Can you tell what were the major factors that created this crisis? The British economy faced a severe crisis fueled by high inflation and trade unions that were too powerful on one hand but very not efficient on the other. Inflation soared to unprecedented levels as if the economy had caught an unrelenting fever. Prices skyrocketed, burdening individuals and businesses with escalating costs. In the mid-1970s, inflation rates reached double digits, peaking at around 25% in 1975. Throughout the late 1970s and early 1980s, inflation remained persistently high, averaging between 10% and 20%. But where did this inflationary pressure come from? I guess it wasn't just a matter of bad luck. I mean, there were probably some specific events that triggered it, right? That's right, there was a variety of factors that fueled inflation. The OPEC oil embargo, which restricted oil supply, sent shockwaves through the global economy, resulting in soaring oil prices. This, combined with two expansionary monetary policies and trade unions that fell in love with strikes, created a vicious cycle of rising prices, eroding the purchasing power of the British pound. I see. So, high inflation had a pervasive impact on the economy and society. Could you elaborate on some of the consequences? Well, the Labour Party that was in office then, led by Prime Minister James Callaghan and his Chancellor of the Exchequer, Dennis Healy, was at the helm of the economy. To tackle soaring inflation and the global impact of the OPEC oil embargo, they introduced measures to boost the economy, including lowering interest rates. The idea was to encourage borrowing and investment. However, this move ended up worsening inflation instead. 
interest rates were cut to around 5%, while other Western countries generally had rates between 5% and 10%. Unfortunately, this decision, maybe unintentionally, worsened the inflation problem, making life more challenging for individuals that faced a dramatically increase in the cost of living and for businesses that struggled to plan for the future due to uncertainty about the cost of raw materials and the demand for their products. So in our days, we should all thank for having central banks independent governors, as they can decide what will be the best monetary actions without an electoral base to satisfy. You are right, Roni, but even today, in some economics, the governors are still not independent and are subjected to the populistic decisions of their country leaders. The situation I described now about the UK during the 70s can be greatly compared to some countries in our days of 2023. As we all know and feel, the world is dealing with high inflation, and some leaders, like President Erdogan in Turkey, take a populist approach by keeping interest rates low to gain popularity. This might seem like a short-term win, but it can actually worsen inflation and create even more economic difficulties in the long run. It serves as a reminder that finding the right balance between political profit and economic stability is no easy task. History teaches us valuable lessons. It is essential to navigate economic challenges with care, even when faced with political pressures. Or nominating talented economic professionals and letting them have absolute freedom with no concern of losing their job just because of unpopular actions. And by the way, speaking of Erdogan, this episode is being recorded in the time before the second round of the Turkish elections. It is the first time Erdogan is not managing to win in the first round so maybe, just maybe, it is related to his populistic monetary policy that caused a severe economic crisis to his people. Hmm, I must say that it makes some sense, yes. But anyway, let's go back to the 70s in the UK. In addition to high inflation, the power wielded by trade unions escalated the crisis. While trade unions played a vital role in protecting workers' rights, their frequent strikes and industrial actions had far-reaching consequences. Essential services such as transportation, energy, and manufacturing came to a grinding halt, disrupting supply chains and choking economic productivity. And the consequences were obviously dramatic. Unemployment rates jumped from around 5% in the mid-70s, reaching more than 10%. These levels were unseen since the Great Depression. Families faced the stark reality of financial hardship, struggling to put food on the table and keep a roof over their heads. This economic crisis set the stage for a shift in leadership and paved the way for Margaret Thatcher, who presented herself as a leader capable of steering the country toward stability and prosperity, to the Prime Minister's office. Thank you, Dan. You've mentioned the Great Depression. I'm aware that you're writing an episode about these magnificent economic events. So it is a good opportunity to subscribe to the channel, to support it, and for getting notified once the next fascinating episode is live. And there you have it, a journey through the rise to power of Margaret Thatcher and the impact of the economic crisis that plagued the UK during the 1970s. We witnessed Thatcher's remarkable political journey, from her beginnings in Grantham to becoming the first female prime minister of the country. The economic crisis, marked by high inflation and trade union power, created a desperate need for change, and Thatcher presented herself as the leader capable of bringing stability and prosperity to the nation. Thatcher's tough leadership style and unwavering commitment to her principles set her apart as a revolutionary leader. Her economic policies aimed to restore competitiveness, stimulate growth, and transform the UK's economy. In our next video, we'll explore Thatcher's economic reforms and their implementation, examining the specific policies she introduced, such as privatization, deregulation, and curbing trade union power. Yes, we'll delve into the reform's outcomes and its impact on various sectors of the economy. From revitalizing industries to transforming London into a global financial hub, Thatcher's reforms had far-reaching implications. We'll also address the winners and losers of her policies, highlighting the tensions between economic reform and workers' concerns. If you liked this video, you'll enjoy the next one for sure. We'll uncover the complexities of Thatcher's economic revolution and understand the long-term effects on the UK and beyond. So stay tuned and make sure to subscribe to Economic Rhapsody to support the channel and be notified once the next video is released. Thanks Roni for this unbiased promotion, it was awesome to work together with you. And thank you guys, for joining us in this inspiring journey of the Iron Lady, we'll continue exploring it soon. In the meantime, I invite you to subscribe, like, share and mostly comment with your thoughts, ideas, facts corrections, and anything else that is on your mind. Economic Rhapsody
Talk to you soon.